The Lives of the Saints by Father Alban Butler, February 4th, St. John de Brito, S.J. It is said that when John of Brito was a child, he became seriously ill. His mother, a lady of noble family connected with the court of Lisbon, invoked the help of St. Francis Xavier and consecrated her son to him. Although John was the favorite companion of the infant Don Pedro, who later inherited the throne of Portugal, his only aspiration was to wear the habit of the great missionary and dedicate his life to the conversion of the infidels. Born in 1647, at the age of 15, he asked to be admitted to the Society of Jesus, and in spite of much opposition, he carried out his purpose. His progress in his studies was so remarkable that after his ordination, everything possible was done to keep him in Portugal. Grace triumphed, however, and in 1673, he set sail for Goa with 16 of his Jesuit companions. The rest of his life, except for a brief interval, was spent evangelizing South India amidst incredible hardships and obstacles of every kind. He was appointed superior of the mission of Madura and traveled on foot with many labors throughout that vast region, situated only 10 degrees north of the equator. Those who worked with him in their letters to Europe speak in glowing terms of his courage and devotion, of the extraordinary austerity of his life, and of the rich harvest of conversions which were the fruit of his labors. From the first, Father de Brito realized the wisdom of the method previously adopted by the missionary Father de Nobili, namely, to live a life identical with that of the natives of the country, adopting their dress, abstaining from animal food, and respecting in all lawful things the ineradicable prejudices of caste. As we may learn from the irrecusable testimony of Sir W. W. Hunter in his Imperial Gazetteer of India, the primitive Jesuit missions are especially interesting. Their priests and monks, Sikh, became perfect Hindus in all traditional matters, dress, food, etc., and were equally successful among all castes, high and low. In the southern peninsula, they succeeded in bringing the former colonies of Syrian Rite Christians temporarily into communion with Rome and converted large sections of the native population of extensive districts. Interestingly, he also adds, schisms disturbed the church. The king of Portugal pretended against the will of the pope to appoint the archbishop of Goa, and Dutch adventurers persecuted for a time the Catholics on the coast. And referring to missionaries such as John de Brito, he comments, all that chivalry and enthusiastic piety could affect, they carried out. It would be impossible here to describe in detail all the difficulties against which Father de Brito had to struggle, and the delicacy of his constitution was not the least of them, for he suffered intermittent fevers and fever that brought him to death's door. The country was politically very unstable, a situation that allowed the fanatical pagan priests to stir up the superstitions of the people at every turn. Many times Father de Brito and his indigenous catechists were treated with brutal violence. On one occasion in 1686, after preaching in the Morava country, he and a handful of the native faithful were apprehended for refusing to worship the god Shiva and were subjected for several days without interruption to severe torture. Once by means of chains, they were hung in trees, and another time tied by an arm and a foot to a rope that slid along a pulley, they were repeatedly submerged in stagnant water with other indescribable affronts. The recovery of Father de Brito was considered miraculous, and long after his release, he was called back to Lisbos. All the efforts of King Peter II and the Pope's nuncio to induce him to remain in Europe were unsuccessful, and he pleaded so vehemently, claiming that duty called him in Madura, that he was granted what he desired. He returned to the mission, and for three years led the same life of heroic self-sacrifice, then, by the machinations of one of the women repudiated by the governor of Siruvali, who had been baptized and had therefore renounced polygamy, he was arrested and at last put to death at Oriur, near Ramuad, by order of the Baja Ragunatha. Father de Brito sent two letters from his prison the day before his execution. I await death, he writes to his father superior, and I await it with impatience. It has always been the object of my prayers. Death is for me the most precious reward for my labors and sufferings. The next morning on February 4, 1693, a large crowd gathered to see the end of this master, Guru, who had been sentenced to death for having taught things subversive to the worship of the gods of the country. After a long wait, because the local prince was nervous about the whole affair, St. John was beheaded. When the news reached Lisbon, King Pedro ordered solemn funeral honors to give thanks and the martyr's mother was present. 
dressed not in mourning, but in full dress. St. John of Brito was canonized in 1947, 